Hello, it is Harriet Pryor and Neil Atkinson back with another Transfer Stat Show. We know you've been loving these so much, so we're back with a Defender Special, aren't we? We've exhausted all the midfielders, even though Liverpool haven't got any more midfielders, but hopefully that'll be to come. So now we are on to centre-backs. And Neil, the formation change at the end of last season has probably heightened the need for a centre-back, well, specifically a, a left-hand sided one. What are your thoughts on that? I think it has. I th and even just watching the pre-season games, I think you've been able to see who it does or doesn't suit. And I think that's the... That's the difficult part of this. And it can suit players up to a point, and I think Liverpool might have to make a few compromises in every way that they recruit. I think every team, and we'll come on to that to an extent, you know, you can't buy the perfect footballer. So I think that there's an element there, but, but what Liverpool could do with is having someone who can play in that left-hand channel of this three, when it becomes a three, who I think is closer to a pure centre-back than a full-back doing a job. And I think that we've seen examples of that, not just with Andy Robertson, but you know Manchester City have done it, where they've been playing four centre-backs at times, Nathan Ake playing off the left. You've seen Veltman doing it for Brighton, uh, Brighton, Brighton on and off the, the season. And Ben White, I think, has been doing it for Arsenal from the right over the course of the campaign. And from there, you can begin to see a set of attributes that you want from that sort of player that's a bit different to a full-back, obviously, mm -hmm. but also to a conventional centre-back. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, that for Andy Robertson, his position and how he's got to, the attributes he's got to have have changed a lot when he's playing that left hand side of centre back. Let's look at some of the players that do that in the league and compare them on the on the most basic radar, I guess, that Statsbomb give you at the moment. Yeah, yeah Statsbomb do, and we keep saying this all the way through that there's a question about the radars where you know Statsbomb radars are really, really good, but as the players are being asked to do more complex jobs at the top of the league, it becomes a little bit different. So Levi Colwell, who was Liverpool's first choice, I think it's fair to say, I think it's reasonable to say that Colwell was the one they wanted from everything that's gone through in the summer. Now they're not going to get him, he's signing a new deal at Chelsea. So Colwell profiles a certain way and was playing a certain role with Brighton on the classic centre on the classic centre radar, radar. Is, yes. so you get to see one of the things you get to see there is he's really really strong in the air wins his aerial battles wins a large number of headers the number of aerial wins I think matters to an extent but what actually matters more I think is your win percentage so Cole will win 71% of his headers which is pretty good uh, over the course of a game he passes the ball well you get to see that as well and he's really involved in XG build up now it's just to sort of give the, the definition from Statsbomb of XG build up because we're going to use it in where we're going to end up it's a model that attributes the expect a goal value to the final shot to all players involved in the possession and breaks it down. What Colwell was brilliant at and why I think Liverpool really wanted him was he was a really good passer of the ball with information on. The other thing to say as well, Harriet, which I think is worth remembering when we're talking about defenders, is defending's a bit more of an art. I think you can, me obviously you can measure goals, that's dead easy, and then assists becomes a little bit murkier. I think as we drop further and further back, it's worth remembering as we talk about all these players that we're going to talk about, it's a bit of an art defending. A lot of it's about doing things that make def make attackers do the mm. wrong thing. And that's really difficult to measure. It's difficult to measure in absence. So I think... A little bit about the space, isn't it? Controlling everything else that's exactly. happening on the pitch that actually you can't put into numbers and metrics. Exactly. Or, you, or if you can, you know, the, the those numbers and metrics, they're still trying to work out the best way to go about them. Mm. And the thing we keep coming back to with the stats is it's not about, and I think this is really important, it's not about getting answers. It's about the beginning to go, all right, well, what are the correct questions? And I think that there's some things here. So... You know, we we'll started with Colwell, we'll move forward to a player who I think has an excellent season last season, I think was underrated prior to last season, maybe isn't underrated now as Nathan Ake. Does really well at City, but here we get to go, well, he's underperforming bits of the way the league average looks on this screen, even though he's, again, involved in XG build-up a lot and passes it well. You know, he's he's relatively good at not being at, at the, on the tackle dribble pass percentage. You know, he's better than average in there, but he's only 74th percentile. He's good at intercepting the ball, but he's only 89th percentile, but he was a really important player for the league leaders last season. And then I've got An Andy Robertson's nine games at the end of the season, and only the nine games at the end of the season on the same radar. And we can see there that Andy's obviously, you know, he's 0.81 aerial wins over the course of a game. This is in comparison to centre halves, but that's really low. His aerial win percentage in comparison to centre halves is really low. But again, he's involved in build up. He puts a lot of pressures in. He wins tackles. So what I thought was, okay, let's create a radar. So this is the one I created, and it's with Colwell. So, yeah, talk us through the metrics that you come up with and why they're all important. Yeah. What do you think Liverpool need out of a centre back? So, first and foremost, possession adjusted interceptions speaks for itself. It, you know, is, is, is the defender nicking the ball back when you need it? The next one's dribble successfully defended. So, rather than have the idea of tackle dribble passed, I th it's a small difference, but I think it's an important one in that what you want to do is you want to stop the stop when, when players are running at Liverpool defenders. We can wonder whether or not they manage to tackle and win the ball, or we can wonder whether or not they manage to just simply stop it. And I feel as though simply stopping it, whilst it feels a bit more reductive, is more important. So that's in there as well. Then you've got possession-adjusted tackles, which is what you think, but again, it's possession-adjusted. You don't want to be giving a lot of fouls away. Yeah. 
then we've got aerial win percentage. Then if it's a left-sided centre-back role, I've got possession adjusted clearances. It's part of the job of, of playing that position. It is getting rid of the ball and emptying it. This one's a little bit more controversial, but I feel as though pressures in opposing half is just interesting, mm -hmm. i.e. are they a really front-footed defender? Mm -hmm. So I think that you want to start in position perhaps at times where this is close to Van Dijk, but if the ball's there to be gone and won higher up the pitch mm -hmm. uh, in, from the side, you want to go and win it. And then the other stuff's about the, the nature of the way in which the players use the ball when they've got it. So passing percentage, XG build-up, deep progressions that I think is always important for Liverpool players who play in that back strip, uh, moving the ball into the final third. Left to right footedness as a percentage, that's not really a metric, that's just us finding out how much they use the left foot as we yeah. go through some of these players. So Ben White's going to really underperform on that, but it's not underperforming, it's just the nature of football. Yeah. And then carries, like how often do the players, Colwell's really high for carries drive here. Forward. Drive forward with the ball, even if it's not dribbling past anyone, how often do they see the ball at their feet and think, you know what, I can move five, ten yards up the pitch, Colwell's 92nd percentile. And if we look at that, we can see that whilst Colwell's not perfect, because no footballer is, we can see that, well, you can see why Liverpool wanted him mm. in terms of the those skills. Does that make sense? That does make sense. So let's have a look then at how Andy Robertson does on this radar as well as some other Premier League players who play in that position. Yeah, so we'll start off, we'll do Ake first because I think Ake is just a really good, again, example. I think Liverpool want more from footedness than you necessarily get from Ake, but you can see there he overperforms the league average and I've taken the league average from this, by the way, is right back, right hand side at centre back, centre back, left hand side at centre back and left back. So all, all the, the defenders, defensive all positions. the defensive positions combined into one. That's the league average and he outperforms the league average in every single metric. Uh, dribble successfully defended is nice and high so you can't you know he, he does get beaten we've seen Salah beat him but he doesn't get beaten all the time uh, fouls aerial wins higher than the average pressures in opposing half I think City are interesting that they drop more mm. than press in there at times but I think Liverpool would press um, deep progression is really really strong airs on the side of his left foot carries the ball well passes the ball well Robertson's the next one and you see with Robertson Again, just using those games at the end of the season. His possession adjusted interceptions is low. Um, his aerial wins at 50% is 24th percentile against all defenders, full stop. That's low. But you can see on everything else that we've measured here, he's, he's doing well. So it's not like the idea of Robertson playing this position is some sort of absolute nightmare that should be avoided at all costs. Mm. But it's just that it doesn't entirely suit in the way it might suit someone who's got a couple of more centre-back attributes. Well, there's also certain things in there that you'd want from someone who's playing that pure centre-back position. And would, like the aerial base would be yeah. the biggest one for you. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think it would be. And especially, you know, Liverpool at the minute, the link with Lavia and Andre Trindade as the centre-back, as the centre-midfield options. And we talked about them on a previous one of these shows. But both of them, I think Lavia's just above the league average for headers last season in, uh, in the position. Uh, Trindade's markedly lower. You've got Thiago in the middle of the park as well. Harvey Elliott will get games for Liverpool over the course of the season. I think it's worth saying. I think Diaz is really good in the air. Gakpo is good in the air. Nunez is a big lad. So Liverpool... You, you can know, rely on other people to fulfil that. Yeah. Fulfil that, but you probably do want to be able to, from time to time, pick this left-hand side at centre-back as someone you think will win headers. Okay. So moving forward from Robertson, Ben White is another good one. And again, just to again reflip this argument, we said before Ake pressures an opposing half was really low. Arsenal, we've seen at times last season, they were really genuinely quite front footed and took a few more risks. And we see Ben White's pressures in opposing half is up. Mm -hmm. The idea of this, it's not like everyone's going to do it the same. So the way Liverpool do it, it's going to be the way different to the way Arsenal do it, to the way Brighton have done it, to the way Manchester City have done it. And also the individual players bring different things to the party. And you can see, obviously, again, just to illustrate the point, left to right foot in his percentage, he's really low because he's right footed. He's right -footed yeah. uh, you get to see the rest of that there. Veltman's interesting. Veltman, really good uh, on dribbles, uh, successfully defended, really good in the tackle. Less, uh, less good in terms of picking the ball up and carrying it, and obviously he's right-footed as well. Um, Clearance is pretty solid. Aerial wins about the average, uh, which is not that much different from where Robertson is as well uh, for a number of players. Um, I've used Aguerd in this one as their examples of players Liverpool can't buy. Mm -hmm. Aguerd's really interesting. Back to this idea of defending an art, and a lot of it's about how teams play. This is Aguerd from West Ham last season, and you're like, good God. But West Ham play a certain type of football, so he doesn't get dribbled past very often. He's left-footed. He doesn't give many fouls away, but apart from that, you're going, this is a really passive underperformance. Mm -hmm. If we look at him the season before when he was at Ron, 
you can see there, he's actually poorer on the dribble successfully defended, but he's really strong on a lot of other att attributes. And when we talked about Decore in the midfield sense, a lot of the things that came out was, he, whilst he played a certain way for Palace, he'd done other things for his previous club. And I wonder if Liverpool are genuinely looking at Aguirre at West Ham, whether or not part of it is the looking as much of what he did when he was in France. So a lot of it does depend on the team context yeah. and the way that the team set up and you can't kind of read too much into one season. If they've done something really well at uh, another team, and I get, I get your point on that. But what other players in the Premier League sticking with that would you think that Liverpool should be looking at or exploring the option of? So there's there's been links, really tentative ones, to Max Kilman at Wolves, left-hand side at centre-half. You've seen him score uh, an excellent goal where he picks the ball up and carries it a long distance. And we, we see he's slightly above carries there, again, left-footed, wins his headers. He's quite a centre-half, he's centre-half. But if Liverpool decided, well, we've got Andy Robertson and we want to have a horses for courses thing, I think that they may consider that someone like Kilman might have a higher ceiling. And I wonder if Wolves are the uh, sort of club that Liverpool could do business with this summer mm -hmm. because they seem a bit financially distressed. Um, I've used Mark, uh, Mark Gay from uh, Crystal Palace. Um, I think he's a good player, but again, this is an eye test one where, to me, he's like a really good progressive defender in moments, but we look at this and there's nothing that really grabs our imagination. The one where I feel he has hard lines in this is Joe Gomez, mm. in that if Trent Alexander-Arnold profiled exactly the same but played off the left, I think Liverpool will commit to Gomez um, and give him a go. Um, Where is this based on this radar? What time period is this? This is entirely based on his, his whole, uh, everything back from the start of the 2018 season. Okay, so, so we've got 65 games of Gomez here. Mm -hmm. And we can see, you know, good on interceptions, good on carries, good at progressing the ball, good in XG build-up, passes it well. You know, possession adjusted clearances is really, really high in there as well. You know, he's a good player. There's a question around errors with Gomez, where I think there's been games, almost like individual games, where he makes three or four significant errors. Napoli away last season, maybe Southampton at the end of the campaign, where they stick in your mind. But apart from that, he profiles really well. The issue Liverpool have got is he plays off the right, not off the left. And we haven't even looked at it, the idea of him playing the left-hand side of the three. I wouldn't be averse to looking at it, but the Liverpool manager hasn't, which makes, makes mm. me think maybe he's looked at it in training. We haven't seen it in pre-season, so maybe they've decided it won't work. They're the domestic ones. There's one other domestic one that I'll come to at the end, which is me being a little bit frisky. Surprise. You yeah. have to stay till the end. You have to stay till the end for that one, but they're the domestic ones. I've got some from overseas that we can look at. Just away from the stats quickly, do you think the player that Liverpool do bring in will have to be settle being a backup to Robertson and Virgil van Dijk for a period or do you think because of the, the Europa League and the different competitions that people are playing in it can maybe be a younger player that's happy kind of finding their feet but not starting every game? I think that you can I think that there's I think you can bring someone in to genuinely compete for the place and on the on the left hand side of the three. I don't think it does need to be a backup and I think if Colwell had come, I think that there'd have been an expectation he was going to get somewhere between twenty and thirty Europa League and Premier League starts. In place of Robertson rather than Van Dyke. Well maybe the, maybe in the Europa League grabbing the grabbing Van Dyke shirt and uh, but in, in the league games, certainly in the Europa League group games, but in the league games competing with Robertson, Van Dyke to start them. I think that that'll still be a similar pattern for whoever it is who they do bring in, that it may well be that there's some league games, you know, an obvious example that we will use will be Brentford away, where you'd choose to have that sort of footballer in ahead yeah. of Robertson. But there'll be other ones, poorer sides at home, where you might go with Robertson and pick and choose. And that should also, I think, elongate and strengthen Robertson's um, ability to, to play a number of games at a really high level as well. And also, and this is a really important part of all of this, that Liverpool are doing this now. They weren't doing it 12 months ago. Mm. Manchester City didn't start last season doing this. It was players like Cancelo and Walker were doing this. Brighton, I think, were, were first to this particular party. And I think, you know, Arsenal, I think that Arteta had an eye on it with Ben White on one flank and Zinchenko on the other. But go back 18 months... You know, only really Brighton were anywhere near doing something like this under Potter, and Potter's teams were always a little bit weird. There was a little bit of that with Tuchel's teams at times as well. My point being is that in 12 months it might be different again. Mm. And so, what you want is a footballer who's able to claim a place either at left back or at centre half. What you don't want is to buy someone who specifically can only do this, and then suddenly it's out of vogue in 10 months' time because everyone's worked it out and worked out how to exploit it. And now we've got a footballer on our hands. So, I think it's important to have the idea of someone who can who can do this for now if this is what we want to do, but also go on as the game changes and moulds. Yeah, and I feel like because we are in between formations, that versatility of players is even Absolutely. more important this summer and maybe even next summer as well. We are going to come on to more players outside of the Premier League, but first, we have been doing so many shows as we gear up to the new season, so here is a clip from both our gutter show and our post-match pint.
Every week throughout the summer, the Anfield Brat brings you the Transfer Gutter Show. The minute people talk about Lavia, oh yeah, obviously he's got all this potential, but he couldn't start. He couldn't start, Lavia. God forbid he starts. We need someone who can start for the new season. Whenever I've seen him, I've just loved watching him play. And that's one of the first things you think about when you want to get a new sign is, will I really look forward to seeing him play at Anfield? Bringing you a breakdown of the rumour mill surrounding Liverpool's transfers. He's just exactly the sort of player that you want to see come into this Liverpool team and change things. And that's, that is what I think he's going to do. To watch or listen, download the Anfield Rap app and subscribe or join us on our YouTube channel. It is the post-match pint, our post-match video from the Anfield Rap. After every Liverpool match, the Anfield Rap brings you the post-match pint. Manchester United nil, Liverpool 7. Fu Arasan is filming this on a bus. It's chaos. Home, away and in Europe, the post-match pint brings you our immediate post-match reaction. To access this and loads more, download the Anfield Rap app or join our YouTube members. Could not get better than this. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed those. The post-match pints will be coming thick and fast as the season kicks off in under two weeks' time. It doesn't feel like we've had a summer. Where is the nice weather been? What is going on? How is it August? <laughs> <laughs> it's clattered into August. Uh, I was reading this place in Northern Ireland that have had the wettest July on record. Uh, it is teamed out. We, keep we should have laughed. Global we, warming. It's I know, not funny. It isn't funny. We keep talking about doing shows outside and you try to plan to do shows outside or filming outside and it looks fine at 11 o'clock and then by half 12 it's absolutely decided to pour down. So yeah, We're it's been... All having lunch downstairs in the office we can't leave we're just rained in it's, it doesn't feel very july and now very august but yeah it's exciting that the season is back i'm looking forward to it now i feel ready for oh, yeah, it oh yeah very much so i'm excited we'll have all the post-match points back after every single game home and away so do subscribe to the ample wrap on the app or you can also do it on the youtube channel for all the video content as well let's step away then from the premier league neil and look yeah. at players that you think radar quite well uh, in different leagues across Europe. Yeah, we'll start off, I mean, first and foremost, if we were to do like a top Trumps thing and people on the Anfield rap, I want to be really clear. I think I've probably made two mistakes in the first part. Pronunciations will be low for me. <laughs> I'd give myself three out of 20 for that. Uh, here's Arthur Theatra. Uh, we'll go that way uh, and we'll hope it's that. Uh, and he's currently at Wren, which is where Aguirre was. He's interesting. Obviously, pulls to the left. We can see that in his left right footedness. Uh, at about ten o'clock on our on our radar in there as well. Really strong dribble, successfully defended is you know 79th percentile. We're happy with that in there as well. Passing percentage is high. You know he looks like a really good expansive footballer. He looks like one who can put his foot on the ball and go from there. Not tons of tackles, but we're going to keep coming back to this with centre backs. How often do you want them going to ground? Is is, is a key issue here. Not many fouls. Good for aerial wins, really strong for clearances. He's an interesting 123 and got a lot of games last season in League One. Um, I've never seen him play, and that's going to be a recurring theme through this. But for mm. me, I think he's he's got something about him. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Um, this is a player who's been strongly linked with Leipzig, and at the time you might be watching this, he may well be a confirmed deal. But I'm intrigued by the strongly linked with Leipzig thing because it links into Gvardiol and all that sort of stuff. It's Lekeba. He's currently at Leon. He's only 20, um, and I think this is a footballer who will go to Leipzig and then everyone will be paying a lot of money for from Leipzig. If Liverpool could swoop in ahead of the game, you never know. Uh, but possession adjusted interceptions, really strong 97th percentile. Um, not tremendous on aerial wins. But that's something that comes over time. So for some footballers, you know, he's only 20 at this point and they'll be, be learning and maybe even just a little bit of final bits of growing in there as well. Clearance is strong and again looks like a progressive footballer. Uh, passes the ball well, carries it in this position. I think Lecaber could be one in, in, in two years' time if we're still doing this. People are saying, should we get Lecaber in? Do you like that age profile for a player that was coming in now, or do you think a little bit older than that would be better? I think there's I think there's no wrong age profile for this position for Liverpool. I think for the midfielders where we've ended up, I quite like the idea of if certainly if there's no one who we love who's 24, 25, I quite like the idea of the two slightly younger players who mm. both got uh, a project with the Europa League this year. I do think a little bit this one for Liverpool. I feel as though you know there is a bit a bit of element of be good now. You know we are talking here about players for whom I think league games will become really really important uh, mm -hmm. over the course of the campaign. And there's no whilst I like Robertson, there's no sort of obvious impediment there. You know I'm quite excited by seeing Jones at number six, and I don't know a lot of people aren't, but I think he could do really well there over a period of time. But part of what would help him and help the team in general is if you've got the option of saying no today it's a nailed on 
these are, these are three defenders defending their hearts out. Mm. And if Trent needs to go and play right back and one of them goes left back because we're going to have a rough uh, a rough 30, then that'll work really, really well for us. I think having that as an option is no bad thing. Okay. It is Guardiola and... Who City have been? Who City have been struggling with. with and yeah. people are saying, oh, Liverpool should swoop in. And this is part of my on-the-numbers thing. Whenever I've seen him, I think he's looked quite good, though I do think he's looked like he can be exposed. And what's interesting is he's, he's really not good when he's ran at... Uh, here up against the, the average, he's 10th percentile of all defenders in the Bundesliga um, and he's low on aerial wins as well and I'd say that stuff's quite important, he's low on possession adjusted tackles, what he's brilliant at, clearly brilliant at, is that he's clearly an excellent footballer with the ball at his feet, mm. here this is where left right footedness is interesting, 71%, so that what that means is he's left footed but he uses his right and he's capable when he does so. Uh, the passing's all really strong, XG build up progressions and carries, for me this is City buying a more progressive version of Ake. Yeah. Um, and this is the, that's the upgrade they're looking to make, which I think is interesting, but it wouldn't surprise me if here and there you see Ake start and this lad not. Mm. Uh, certainly, again, he, it is worth saying he's only 21. It depends on the opposition as well, doesn't yeah. it? Sometimes you're going to want a more defensively-minded player. Sometimes you're going to want someone who can drive forward a bit more. And, and then you'd have those options if you were... If you were City looking at that, what other players have you got across the across uh, Europe? Also in Europe, uh, Leverkusen is Hincapi, uh, Piero Hincapi. Um, he's interesting again, good on dribble, successfully defended, so obviously good at shepherding people away, one on one, 71st percentile. Um, not outstanding anywhere else, it's worth pointing out, not quite what you'd want in the air, he's only 21. Um, pressures in the opposing half, better than the average, but not outrageous quite left-footed carries, don't quite see him being part of building the play mm. is an important point here, but feels as though he could be a good enough one-on-one -on -one defender from Liverpool's point of view. Um, staying in the Bundesliga, <laughs> similarly good. Um, he's not going away. He's not going away. He's, well, he's not going to Tottenham. You know, there's been, well, he might go to Tottenham, but there's been loads of links with him going to Tottenham and it's not happened is uh, Mickey Longlegs, Mickey van der Ven. Um, again, really strong on dribble, successfully defended, goes to ground in, in tackles on a regular basis in here as well. Not terrific on aerial wins, but progressive uh, enough to make him wonder whether or not he's got a ceiling to go to if he played for Liverpool or not Wolfsburg in terms of how he uses the ball. I think, I think that one may well be going, go, not going anywhere anytime soon. The next one is, the for me, what I would sort of frame as the class horse in the field is Bastonia into Milan, who has been a pleasure to watch for, for years whenever I've caught them. And yet, it's not quite as dramatic a radar as I sort of anticipated. I thought, I, I thought oh, when we get to Bastoni, it'll be <laughs> boom in the sides. And it's just not. Um, not necessarily great when he's run out one on one. Not quite as good in the air as I thought he was. I thought he was a good aerial performer, decent enough on the interception. So the defending's all a little a little average. Now, it might be that he hasn't got a lot of defending to do, but what I would say is a lot of this stuff is possession adjusted. Um, even the you know even moving along deep progressions is nice and strong passing percentage a little bit a little bit lower than I, again I'd have anticipated uh, XG build ups really good though um, and obviously looks to carry it when he can I just thought that'd pop more to mm. be honest with you but again this is back to it being an art not a science in this area of the pitch and also he just looks fab doesn't he uh, he's just gorgeous um, he's, I don't he's, actually know what he oh, looks like look him up in the meantime he's he's, he's the latest in I'll a long line after the show, after the show yeah uh, uh, he's the latest in a long line <laughs> of, 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 of wonderful of wonderful looking Italian defenders. Um, this is the really interesting one. We know he's got a release clause, Gonzalo and Accio, and where he's weak air, arguably, is in a couple of the defending aspects there. So he's not been particularly front footed on pressures, clearances, he's a little bit below average uh, for the league, and again, it's possession adjusted. Aerial wins maybe mildly concerns you. But if Liverpool were looking to the idea of hijacking Gavardiol and what Gavardiol is as a footballer. Don't hijack Vardy, I'll just buy an Accio. Yeah. Um, you know, do that instead. Sporting have been not, not the, the best side in Portugal, but one of the best teams in Portugal. He intercepts it well, he tackles well, you know, it, it, it's strong enough on the dribble, successfully defended. If maybe, just maybe, Liverpool might want a bigger footballer because they might think, well, we can get Andy Robertson to do a lot of what looks good here, mm. but we, we, we can't make him five, five inches taller. How tall is this? About six foot one. So it's, he's not enormous, but he's not he's not Robertson's height either. Mm. But all the other stuff absolutely bangs. Passing percentage, 91st percentile against all the Portuguese defenders. XG build-up, 98th percentile. Deep progressions, that's high for a centre mid, 8.78. 99th percentile for a defender. Um, he's left-footed, but he's not dominantly left-footed, 83%. Suggests he uses his right, and his carries shows that he's front-footed with the ball. I think Inaccio is one where you know I'm able to go... 
and if there is a release clause and it is under 40 million, I do wonder if this is where Liverpool end up uh, because I'm looking at that and as I say, I don't think he solves everything and you've still got a bit of an aerial question. Yeah. But he looks to me like, of the ones that we've gone through here, he looks to me like the most impressive. I'm going to ask you for your top three, but first of all, I think you have a surprise package, don't you? And a, a late entry to the show. Yeah, a late entry because I've just done the call with Dave and Mooney um, and in there with Dave, he basically said... You know what? It's odd to me that Crystal Palace didn't seem interested in uh, Emmerich Laporte at 35 million. And I thought Emmerich Laporte at 35 million. Now, Manchester City maybe wouldn't do business with Liverpool, but if you look at Laporte, um, I think he profiles really strongly. Again, he's left footed, but he's not obsessively left footed. It's a 70, 76% uses his left foot against 24% to his right. Possession is just an interception, strong. Carries strong, uh, aerial wins strong, clearances strong. Not doing a lot of pressing in the opponent half, so he's he is more of a centre half. And then you look at all of his ability on the ball, and again he he, he profiles like that elsewhere. Falling out of favour at City uh, for one reason or another. Uh, it could be that he might not be the sort of personality that Guardiola wants to work with, but it doesn't feel like it's gone the full Cancelo, at least. Um, City, I suspect, would not want to do business with Liverpool. Yeah, that's the key issue. Isn't but it? if they did want to do business with Liverpool, then. The other question on, on Laporte is that he is 29 and he wouldn't come if he didn't think he was getting games. Mm. Like, that's where you are looking at someone who's... He's not going to go from the position where he doesn't think he's getting regular enough football at Manchester City and then come and play for Liverpool. Same so it, we, I think you'd have to have a really clear sense of when you were going to use him. But it could well be the sort of sign and that gets you another season out, season or two out of Van Dijk at the highest level because you can protect him even more mm. uh, in there as well. You could play Robertson and Laporte together, which I don't think you could do necessarily with Inaccio and, and, and Robertson. Mm. So I think there's maybe a journey there, there's an argument. If you're if you're gonna if you're gonna top three me, then I'm probably I'm gonna, gonna top three. That was my next question. If you're gonna top three me, then I'm probably gonna go uh with Inaccio at one. Um, I'm going to move to Laporte at two and say Liverpool should see if they can do it and if it will work. I'm tempted by a word in that he's had a year in the Premier League, but I'm probably not going to quite have him as my third choice. I'm actually going to go back to Ren, uh, where uh, Theatre replaced him and say, if you're asking me on the pure numbers, this t looks to me like a centre-back who may well have the sort of ceiling that Liverpool want, offers an alternative to Robertson, could play next to Robertson rather than, unlike Inaccio, and I think that they're the three where Liverpool could end up picking from. And as I say, I don't think City would do business with us, but I think that they're, they're three names. Do you think we're going to get a defender? Yeah. And a midfielder, two? Two, yeah. Um, and I think that they will still be frisky about one more. Uh, and I understand why people don't like the idea that they negotiate and they're trying to get as low a fee as possible. What I would say is that if they end up, for instance, looking at getting a player in for 20 million, it may well be because they saved 5 million on four players. Well, two midfielders, one defender, frisky for one more. We'll leave you with that. Thank you for watching the Transfer Stat Show. As ever, do subscribe to the channel for more content like this and download the Ample Wrap app. You get some free tokens. We love free token, don't we? The free tokens, post-match pints. Post-match pints will be on YouTube later on today after the friendlies as oh, well. Yeah. Playing a game of football today, aren't We're we? going to go and watch it. I mean, the, the, the team's we out. Be playing. The team is out. It was a good team. I've enjoyed enjoyed the, the line-up. Yeah, oh, do you know strong. the line-up? I don't know the line-up. I have, yeah. Do you want, I won't talk you through different this. I'll show. tell you after. It's a different show, but we'll be back for that later. Thank you for watching.